This episode will be quite short because this week I focused mostly on reading about JavaScript and finishing and testing recipe box app. two books that I've been reading this week. Uh, the first one is Eloquent JavaScript. Uh, this is available at eloquentjavascript.net uh, and it's available there for free. When you look in the contents, um, you can notice that there are some basic parts uh, like, um, you know, functions, values, types, or um, how to uh, deal with uh, bugs and error handling. Uh, however, um, revising them uh, after writing some time in JavaScript um, it, uh, it is helpful because uh, uh, you see the things a bit differently than you said for the first time when you, um, when you read about functions uh, or about um, objects for the first time. So uh, it's worth doing really. The book has also exercises, so at the end of the chapters you will find small exercises um, with the console to practice what you've read, to practice the theory. The second book that I started uh, reading uh, this week and uh, I chose parts of it is Speaking JavaScript. Uh, Speaking JavaScript is available at speakingjs.com I will put the link to this book in the video description below. And when you look at the table of contents, again, uh, you have a quick start with JavaScript where you have basic JavaScript issues like um, syntax, uh, where to put semicolons, where to, how to put the comments, but something really basic, really. But um, later you go to, um, to more um, complex chapters like JavaScript in depth, Right now I'm choosing the chapters from it that I'm reading. On my reading list there is also You Don't Know JS, so You Don't Know JavaScript. And this is a series that's also for free on GitHub. I got interested in this series uh, listening to uh, Free Code Camp's uh, New Year's uh, Eve um, live stream. JavaScript 30 with Westboss is uh, also for free and it consists of 30 challenges um, that should be implemented in vanilla JavaScript. I will uh, look into them uh, and choose some to implement. Uh, so next week I'm going to connect uh, this JavaScript 30 uh, with uh, reading the books. This is how the recipe box uh, has changed this week. Finally I pushed it to the live server. Uh, it's at the one who does um, slash recipe box. During testing it turned out that I have to change a bit the storage logic. The reason for this change was that um, my previous uh, storage logic took everything what the user had in the storage. So for example on Chrome uh, there was no problem but on Safari and some other browsers uh, well, uh, there were things in the storage that were from previous apps, from previous um, actions the user took. So I had to change a bit the storage logic, it works right now uh, correctly and uh, it remembers just only the issues connected with recipe box. I also added the formatting in ingredients and instructions. So uh, in ingredients, each enter causes a new line to create um, an impression of uh, the list that's unordered, of course. In the instructions, uh, each new enter uh, gives a new paragraph. And so it's also uh, formatted. 
In my opinion, it looks better right now because it's more natural the way uh, a user introduces ingredients. It's usually one below the other. And also when a user uh, hits enter in such a long text as instructions, they get the new paragraph. The new thing from this week is also the favicon. It's quite simple, but still better than uh, the default uh, that was before here. One more thing that was also corrected this week is that during the addition mode, uh, these labels and uh, these things were overlapping. Right now, they are not, so it's fixed, and I'm happy because of that. Generally, this week in this app was a lot about testing, introducing some small style changes, fixing some small bug issues uh, and this is how it looks uh, when you have more recipes on mobile it looks like that there's one below the other and this is the look on tablet size of course as always there could be more improvements in it and uh, the iterations uh, however version one is finished Unfortunately, in version 1, I didn't introduce uh, the image resizing uh, to prevent the situation when there is not enough uh, storage for, uh, for the um, images. I wasn't able to do it right now. Maybe in the next version, um, it would be <clears throat> better to connect it to the database and to make this uh, image resizing uh, on the server side. Not sure right now, I'm not able to do it. This project turned out to be quite complex. I'm happy that it's done, that the first version is ready to go. This is the last episode in this series. Thank you for all the comments, thank you for being with me and thank you for all the feedback I got from you. It was a great experience and I leave you with the rest of playlists in Freecode Camp. Remember to keep on doing and stay motivated.